The weather's warm, the sun is out, and I'm on the Garden Peninsula. We'll start out with some perch fishing and end up with smallmouth. We started out perch fishing. We decided to leave, come down to South River, and we had a blast. Then, wood ticks. What can we do to keep them from hitching a ride? The best tick repellent that you can get out there, bar none. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. Welcome to Garden. Clean air, clean water, and clean energy. The Garden Wind Farm consists of 14 turbines and is the first wind energy generating facility in the Upper Peninsula. It became operational in 2012 and can supply enough energy to power half the homes in Delta County. But we weren't here to look at windmills. We were here to fish. Most fishing adventures begin and end at the dock. We were in Garden, where the dock means something a bit different. We began at the dock at the dock, and yes, ended at the dock at the dock. I hooked up with Brian Claremont, Nate, and Beatty Knot guide Dustin Barbu for a day on the water. First on the agenda, Lake Michigan Perch. Well, right now I'm just hooking up the old gotcha perch rigs. It's kind of a, not really a secret, but it's what we like to use. They got a fly, a little pink bead on there. I like the orange beads with the red fly the best, but all I got is pink today. Using the minnows, kind of keeps the small ones away. We've been using crawlers quite often, but kind of get sick of reeling in 40, 50 small ones to keep two big ones. So we go with the minnows, that brings us more keepers. What I like to do is give it a little drag across bottom, always keeping tension on my line as well. It kind of helps you feel the light bites. Sometimes the big ones, they, they'll grab that bait and swim towards your line. You can see your line loosen up and it really helps having an ultralight pole. There's a big baby knock perch. It's not your biggest, but that's a good keeper, good eater. We like these ones. It's just a little baby. We'll get some bigger ones. Started out a little deeper and we weren't getting no bites, so we moved in a little bit. You gotta be little before they get big. Right? Yup. Next year, this one will be hitting the grease, not the water. That's perfect for eating, but to eat. When we're perch fishing, I like to rig my poles up with the Power Pro. I use the high vis yellow. Usually, if you got slack in your line, you can't feel that subtle bite. Sometimes them big ones, they're not biting super hard. And when they do, they swim towards you. So it's a lot harder to feel. And that's why I don't like using a bobber because your bobber will sit out there. And sometimes it'll swim around and you can't tell in the waves when you got one on. Most of the time you get a swallowed hook and you kill a lot of them baby perch. Or this way you can feel them in the bite right away and you get them right by the lips. They're spawning in here for sure, but they take a lot of cover from the comrades. They'll push them in, they'll come out. The comrades, you'll see them, they'll line up by the thousands out there. And well, I think the perch kind of tuck up in here underneath these boats, and these boats kind of keep the comrades away, which kind of keeps our population of perch going. Them comrades, they take a lot, a lot more perch than people think. They're eating limits and limits, everyone. You throw them in a roller, roll them all up nice, lay them out. That's good eating, Dustin. They don't get no better. Thanks for taking us today. Not a I problem. Appreciate it. I appreciate you coming always, down. Always it's a, always a pleasure. Yeah, always a good time fishing together. Oh, look at this. Look at this. A walleye. Oh no, it is a perch. Look at this one. <laughs> but you know what? This is a big female, and I don't like them this big. I like the other ones, so we're going to let this one go. But that's got to be all at 12 inches, eh? Maybe even 13. These are big girls, big females. I'm going to let these bigger females go, so they make some more perch for us. There you go, girl. All right, that was fun. 906 Outdoors is brought to you by Race Driven, your source for premier power sports products. Customer driven, quality driven, race driven. Get in touch with your adventurous side and find your drive with Race Driven. As an online retailer, dealership, and manufacturer, we can provide power sport enthusiasts with virtually any part or accessories for ATV, UTV, and motorcycles. Providing a variety of services including manufacturing, prototyping, and powder coating, Race Driven gets it all done right in Escanaba. Our highly experienced team will find you the best products to maximize your performance and keep you safe. Customer driven, quality driven, race driven. 20, 21, 22. 
22. We're getting there. Well, that does it for the perch fishing for now. We're gonna head to South River, try and catch some bass, see how many we can get today. bay fish and perch to come for this right here and this this is a nice bass he's bomb got a big fat belly yeah that's what stick. we're after on that one. it did four or five pounder back to some more fishing oh no nice bass See if I can do the old lift her up on this one. I don't know, that's a pretty big one. Ooh. Inch per inch, pound to pound in. These smallies are awesome. Nice smallie. Nice. That bite's starting to turn on now. Nice smallie. Nice little pre, pre spawn. Smalley, inch for inch, pound for pound, they fight really good. 80s lure lipstick. They're working good today. That purple and white's good color. The pike like them too. Go get bigger, go make babies. Four or five weeks from now, I should start booking trips. Middle of June, beginning of July. We'll be fishing pike, bass, perch, walleye. If we get on some musky, we'll start getting some musky baits and start getting rigged up for them as well pretty much anything but salmon. Get on as much bites as we can. You know, the more to offer, just be versatile is what we're going for. And now I'm using a, the shadow wrap, size 11, that's perch color. Do some guiding out a little baity knock. I don't know how much inland lake fishing we'll do. We'll do a little bit of that. Mainly sticking to big baity knock, little baity knock areas. A little ice fishing, that's, in, that's always in the works. Yeah, he came up and I, I slowed her down because I seen him behind it. And as soon as I slowed her down, boy, is he a chunk. He's a chunk. Raised here pretty much my whole life. Commercial fishing background, so I know the waters pretty well. A lot of experience. It helps out big time when you're trying to play the waters and the winds. Beautiful color. We're excited to be in the new Ranger 621. Lots of nice equipment, lots of lures, lots of bait. Full guide service, life jackets, poles. You just show up, bring some snacks, some drinks. We'll have a fun day fishing. This isn't like the other stuff you get, this really sticks. You see how nice it sticks to your lure? And this is the lure lipstick, I talked about it before. And there's a fear pheromone in there. Very impressed with these JT rods as well. JT Outdoor Products rods. Shadow wrap. Lure lipstick drew the big one in that time. Hey, we're having fun, we're catching fish, that's a call right? Feel nice. Two, three, five. 
Double, triple. We gotta get a triple, guy. Triple, triple, big fish. Yeah, triple. Triple. Nine oh six outdoors is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Make it fresh, make it yours. Make it fresh, make it yours with Cooking Wild Seasoning Summer Sausage, Jalapeno Summer Sausage, Garlic Summer Sausage, Snack Sticks, Teriyaki Snack Sticks, Breakfast Sausage, Maple Breakfast Sausage, and Kudagi. Can't decide? The new Cooking Wild Creates Your Own 4-Pack makes it easy. Just pick any four seasonings for only 20 bucks. Create yours today at CookingWildSeasonings.com. We've got some great fishing here in the UP. Some of the best is fishing for smallmouth. Here's some good tips from Northwoods guide Mike Miladnik about smallmouth bass fishing. Biggest problem most bass fishermen in particular have is they want to do everything fast. That's good when the fish are active and aggressive, but right now we're dealing with the post spawn. I, I've been catching a lot of fish, but you gotta learn to fish slow. But then people say, ooh, they're, they're biting real heavy. And that's a mistake that's made by a lot of fishermen. All of a sudden you catch three, four fish, start beating everything up. If anything, I start slowing down because I just caught all the fish that are active. There might be 10 fish in there, catch three or four right away. But now I want to catch the four or five other ones that are in there feeding on all these crayfish. I slow myself down. Slower means more fish. Lyme disease is an inflammatory disease caused by bacteria that are transmitted by ticks. Up to 50% of ticks in Lyme endemic areas are infected. Infected or not, I'm sure none of us are too thrilled about having a tick latch on for a free meal. Here's a look at something that can decrease the odds of that happening. This is Brian Anderson and I just want to talk to you today about something kind of unique. It's about wood ticks. We all hate them here in the north and we all want them dead. Many of my friends were really struggling with Lyme disease and I'm thinking, what can I do about this? A Lyme disease is just so horrible for people. It's just terrible. I was trying to design products to try to kill them because my wife just despises them. She can't stand ticks. I learned about how, what they like, what they don't like. They, uh, they don't like, for example, uh, essential oils. They don't like uh, fruit smells and, 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 and fruit odors. Uh, what they really like is anything to do with humans or some blood type of animal. Uh, what I mean by that is they like carbon dioxide smell so anyways, I start doing all this research and I start coming across this one particular product time and time again. What it is, it's called permethrin. And it is the best tick repellent that you can get out there, bar none. Beats the heck out of DEET. It's not even in the same category. All right, Permethrin is basically the synthetic version of pyrethrin, which is the insect repellent in a, in a chrysanthemum flower. They put this product into a bottle so it's easy to use. It's odorless. So somebody's out there turkey hunting or, or deer hunting or whatever, they can put this stuff on their clothes and it's odorless. One of the best parts about this also is that once it's on your clothes, it's effective for up to six washes. I put this on my shoes, my socks, my pants, my shirt. I even put it on my hat. I started doing it last summer and guess what? I don't get ticks anymore. The funny thing is, almost everybody I talk to around the UP here, nobody's ever heard of this. So anyway, I'm trying to get the word out here to, so people can hear about this. This is how it comes uh, if you buy it. Let's say my wife bought this at Menards the other day. It's effective for ticks, chiggers, mites, mosquitoes, all kinds of little uh, nasty little bugs that we all hate. About a year ago, I decided I need to do something about this, and I started working on a website. Everything I'm talking about in this whole segment tonight is all on my website. There is a wealth of information. I mean, if your kids are going to summer camp this summer, they need to have the stuff on their clothes before they go. This is a 24 ounce bottle. They also make it in a 12 ounce bottle. Each one of these bottles here will do about four to six outfits, pants, shirt, and everything. Spray it on your hunting clothes. Spray your backpacks. 
How about sleeping bags too? Even your tent you can spray with this stuff to keep those ticks off. All you do is you just spray it on. You go to your clothesline, it's best to do it outside, and you spray it on there. You can get clothes that already have permethrin treated right in the fabric. When you get permethrin treated in the clothing, it lasts up to 70 washes. That's pr practically the life of the product. You can get it from uh, uh, numerous different places. You can also, hunters, get this stuff right here from Game Hide, which is on the site, camel clothes. They call it a limitic. They use the uh, insect shield as the way that they treat the clothes. You got on practically for the life of the clothes. There's another product here too. These are like long johns, but I, w I wanted to just to show the point here. They kind of call this a base layer of clothing. And you can buy this stuff, it's called rhino skin, all right? And it's basically, you would put that underneath your clothes if you want to do it that way. They have a, the, the pants like this and a shirt like this here too, even gloves. Insects, they can't even penetrate that at all. There's actually a company where you can actually send your own clothes, your very own clothes to them, and they will treat them for you. And the nice thing about that, they use the same kind of stuff, and they'll send them back to you. And uh, they're also good for about 70 washings. <laughs> so if you have your own personal stuff, that's a great option right there for you too. See, the thing with permethrin is it's a thousand times more toxic to insects than it is to humans. If you get it on your skin, it's no big deal because the oil just evaporates it. But animals, it kind of hit, hits their nervous system. And I mean, ticks will do somersaults on your pants because it, it affects them. Sometimes it even kills them. <laughs> so it's some really cool stuff. Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works, home of Michigan's largest custom knife factory showroom. Rapid River Knife Works is the largest custom knife factory showroom in Michigan. The 10,000 square foot showroom is awesome. Hunting knives, pocket knives, and kitchen knives. Watch your custom knife being made and engraved. Free laser engraving with your personal message or company logo. Lifetime warranty on every knife and free sharpening. Plus, visit Rapid River Knifeworks gift shop for Stormy Cromer and RRK gear. Bring the family and visit Rapid River Knifeworks today. There's different ways that you can actually uh, kind of help tick-proof your yard. What you want to do is you want to get rid of a lot of the uh, leaves and, and tall grass around the edge of your yards. Ticks don't jump out of trees. Contrary to popular beliefs, they're going to be in low-lying stuff, and they have to have, uh, uh, like, they have to get on something, like some we call it as a host. They're going to sit on a, on a, on a branch of, of, of grass, and they're going to do what they call questing. They're looking for something to grab onto, you know, something that's got blood in it, like us or, or animals, and then they're going to hitchhike with them. You can buy these little things called tick tubes. Basically what it is, it's kind of like dryer lint or cotton balls. And what I did is I took some dryer lint that my wife saved for me and I laid them out on the basement floor and I sprayed permethrin on them. Then I took some little toilet paper tubes like this here. See, I have them strategically placed down in there. And I just put some clear contact paper on the outside to kind of protect them from weather. And I put some dryer lint right in there that's been treated with permethrin, okay? And you're thinking, why in the heck is this guy doing that? Here's why. Because at night, mice like mice are very nocturnal. They like to walk around, they pick up stuff like this, and they take it back to their home in the ground. All right? So they make their bedding underground with dryer lint, you know, if they can find that. And then you got to remember that mice are very big uh, carriers of ticks. All right? So they have them all over them. When those ticks start to drop off, they're going to drop into this permethrin treated dryer lint and then they die. So that's one way that you can help limit your tick population in your yard is with dryer lint. <laughs> it, it cost me virtually nothing to do it but if that can help take some ticks down a little bit that's fine. Uh, you can also even put two to three foot wide hedge all the way around your yard out of wood chips, okay? Because wood chips are very rough. They can't walk over that kind of stuff. That's why <laughs> wood ticks are basically hitchhikers. So these things are explained on the site there too. It's an incredible education to go on the site there and just take some of the things that I've, I've used and, and found out about and uh, do what, whatever you want with them uh, to benefit your yard. Now the permethrin is not designed to go on the skin. 
like I said earlier, if you do get a little bit on your skin, that's okay. The oil in your skin is going to dissipate it, but it's not recommended at all to go on your skin. There's another product here called Picaridin, and this is designed for the skin. It's going to last on your skin for probably, you know, 8 to 12 hours, you know, 10 to 12 hours, something like that. And it's a, a lot less toxic than other things that a lot of people use. So this is what's highly recommended to use on your skin instead of DEET or other stuff like that there too. Let's say you're out in the woods and you thought, oh my gosh, I forgot I didn't put on my permethrin treated clothes. What you can do is once you get home is you take your clothes and you put them in the dryer on high for about 15 minutes because see ticks are really best when they're around moisture. So if you put something on hot, dry, like, like a dryer, it's gonna kill them in 15 minutes. What's the best way to take a tick off? The best thing to do is use a tweezers and get it down to the skin as close as you can and pull it straight up. The reason that you want to do it that way is because if you make them mad, and this sounds kind of gross, but it's the truth, they will regurgitate some of their junk in their guts into your skin. In other words, they're puking it in you. And that's where you can get some of the bad stuff. And they offer more than just Lyme. Uh, they offer other tick-borne illnesses too. All right, so you want to take it straight up. And the next thing you can do, you can also even save that tick. All right, if, if you're really concerned about it, and, and which is not a bad idea. And on the website, I also have places where you can actually send that tick in to get it examined and see if it is Lyme infested or, you know, whatever. And there's three different companies that people can use on there. If you do get what they call as a bullseye, that means, you know, uh, a dot with a circle around it, that is a sure sign that you probably have Lyme. All right. And that's taken to the next step here of what do you do next? All right. What happens is when people get Lyme, now I'm going to say right, right now, I am not a doctor. I am not a Lyme expert. I'm just here helping people know how they can prevent from getting it as best that I know of in all the research that I've done. But if somebody's suspecting Lyme, probably some of the best things to do is go to a Lyme literate doctor. On the website, I also have where you can actually put in your name and address and zip code and stuff like that, and they will pop up a couple different uh, Lyme literate doctors. I also have some, you know, Lyme clinics that are around the country, but Lyme is absolutely miserable. I've had people, you know, a lot of people that have gotten really sick from it. So uh, going to somebody who is really, really good at it. The regular family MD has not been trained specifically in it. And especially if somebody takes a long time to ever get diagnosed, because most people don't get diagnosed for at least a year or two after the fact, and then they're miserable with it, then they really need to go somebody to somebody who is uh, really an expert in it so they can be treated properly. Uh, that's as best I can say about that is, is, is really go to somebody who really, really knows it well.